Example 167. At the 1% significance level, test the claim that there is a linear relationship between the number of casino employees in thousands working in Mississippi and the crime rate per thousand. Let's talk about this claim. It says test the claim that there is a linear relationship. It doesn't say positive, and it doesn't say negative. It just says there is a relationship. So that means that the slope is not equal to zero. So that's going to be our claim, that the slope is not equal to zero. So the claim is that the slope, beta 1, is not equal to zero. Something to keep in mind here about claims, if it's less than zero, the slope, it means a negative relationship. And what that simply means is as the two variables move, they move in opposite directions. In other words, if there was a negative relationship here, we'd be saying that as there's more casino employees, or basically that leads to the idea of more gambling, right? As there's more gambling, there is what? Lower crime. That would be the idea of a negative relationship. As this one goes up, this one goes down. That's a negative relationship. Positive relationship would be the idea that what? As there's more gambling, or hence more casino employees, the crime rate goes up. And so probably the idea behind this is that basically, you know, I think most people would agree that gambling is probably not going to lower the crime rate. And so most likely the most logical choice is that gambling increases the crime rate, which means a positive relationship. As the number of casino employees go up, the crime rate goes up. But I want you to bear in mind that the problem does not say that explicitly, so we must use not equal to. All it says is there is a linear relationship, right? So being a linear, saying there's a linear relationship simply says that the slope is not equal to zero. All right, so let's move on then and go into the next phase of the process. Next phase of the process is to express HO and HA from the claim. And, you know, the claim has a not equal to symbol, so that makes it HA. So all we're going to do is simply say not equal to zero. And HO will be the idea that it's equal to zero, the opposite of not equal to. Then we do the data step. And you know, we're going to work out the data step in a moment, but I just want to talk to you about what you should do normally in the data step. You should first get your sum of squares values, right? your SS values. You need to get that. Once you have your SS values, you're going to get your slope estimator beta 1 hat. Once you get your SS, so we're moving here from one to the next, right? Once we get that, we move on to the next one. Once you have this, you should get the sum of square for error. Once you have that, you're going to move on to end up getting the S value. And then once you have that, you're going to move on to finally the S beta 1 hat. And that's the end of the data step. That'll basically give us enough to work out our test statistic. Okay, so let's apply these techniques. Now, we're not going to actually work out the full SS set of values because it takes a long time. And I've shown how to do that before. So I'm just going to basically copy down numbers here that I've already done for us. So 14.876 repeating. That's your mixed term, SSXY. SSXX is 126.83 repeating. That's an 8 there, sorry, 83 repeating. And then finally, we do our last step, which is SSYY, which is equal to 1.82513 repeating. All right, so those are our numbers that we're going to need for the next set of steps. From there, we're going to move on to this beta 1 hat value, right? So beta 1 hat. So beta 1 hat, then SSE, then S, then S beta 1 hat. So beta 1 hat is going to be just the mixed term SSXY over SSXX, the term with just the X values. So when you do that, you're going to have 14.876 repeating divided by 126.83 repeating. Let's see what that ends up giving us in the problem. I'm just going to work it out quickly here without showing it on the screen because I know you know how to do that as well. And so when we're done, we get the answer 0 0.11729, 3 dot dot dot. It keeps going. Now from there, the next step is, once we have our beta 1 hat, is to take that number and to use it to get SSE. So SSE is a formula. And that formula is going to be the y sum of squares, so SSYY, minus beta 1 hat times the SSXY, the mixed term. So we have this number. It's 1.82513 repeating. We're going to then subtract off the number we just found, which was 0 0.11723 repeating. 
And then finally, we'll multiply that guy by the mixed term, which is 14.876 repeating. All right, so I squeeze it all in there barely. Let's see what that works out to be. SSE will basically be equal to, we'll do it here. We're going to say one point, oops, 1.825113 repeating minus 0.117293. I'm just going to leave it at that and then times, you know, we could use the full thing, but I'm just going to type in what I've typed in. That should be good enough for rounding for decimal places. And then we'll have 14.876 repeating. All right, so all that's entered in our calculator. We get the answer finally. 0 0.08020444704. So that's the whole long thing, right? The full SSE. Now, once you have SSE, remember we're going to take that and move on to the S calculation. So the S calculation, so I guess I can do it right here. The S calculation, remember, is the square root of this SSE value that we just found divided by n minus 2. So we have SSE, what's n minus 2 though? Well, if you look at our problem, it gave us 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pairs of data, right? 6 pairs of data. So that's our n then 6. So when we fill in our fraction, it's going to end up being the square root of this value that we have here, the 0 0.080204 dot 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 value, right? That same number that we have in our calculator there divided by 6 take away 2, which is 4. So in my calculator, I'm just going to divide that by 4. And when I'm done, I'm going to raise it to the half power, which is the same as taking the square root. And when I'm finished, I find out that S is approximately equal to 0 0.1416, right? Now, I'm not going to actually round that. I'm going to go ahead and store that in my calculator briefly. So I'll store it in my calculator as, say, X, just so I have it. And then my next step of the process is to finish up by getting S beta 1 hat. The only thing you need to do to get the standard error of beta 1 hat is to simply take this S value that you have and you're going to put it in a fraction. And it's going to be S over the square root of SSXX. So let's do that now and see what we get. What we end up coming up with. So I still have my S in my calculator. It's still sitting there. I'm going to divide it by the square root of the number here, which is 126.83 repeating. So 126.83 repeating. I'm going to close it up, hit enter, and I finally get 0 0.01257339959. Okay, so that's a long, drawn out answer, but that is the goal of this step, right? There's two things we wanted to get the beta 1 hat and the S for beta 1 hat. Those two things collectively give us our test stat. So let's take those numbers and now apply them into our next step of the problem. The next step of the problem is to do the test statistic. It's going to be a T test statistic. It has a simple formula. It's beta 1 hat divided by its standard error. And as we enter that in, we're just going to put the numbers that we already calculated, 0 0.117293 dot dot dot, divided by the number we have down here, which is 0 0.01257. 33959. It's a lot of writing there, all to get the final answer. So I still have that S beta hat in my uh, calculator here. So I'm just going to take the 0.117293 and divide it by that value. And when I finish, I get a test stat of 9.329. At this point, I can pretty much assume that I'm going to reject the null hypothesis. That test that is pretty extreme, and we generally don't find critical values that far out to the right when we go and look them up on the table. However, just to be you know consistent with our normal technique, let's draw the bell curve, and let's go ahead and identify the rejection regions. In this case, there'll be two of them, and then we'll find our critical values. So remember that this is a two-tailed test because HA has a not equal to symbol. So we'll have a rejection region here, and we'll have a rejection region here. We're going to have two values. One will be negative, and one will be positive, of course. And those are the critical values that we need to find. Lastly, we're going to think about alpha in the problem. The alpha is 1%. That means it's only 0.005 in each one of these tails, right? 
0.005 in each tail. Now because of that, the last thing we want to do is figure out the degrees of freedom. What's the degrees of freedom here? Well, remember what we used for n. The n was 6 because we had 6 pairs of values, so the degrees of freedom is only 4. So 4 degrees of freedom. So 4 degrees of freedom, 0 0.005 as our value. Let's go to our t-table and figure out what our critical values are. Okay, so we're in the 0 0.005 column here, and we're going down to we see 4 degrees of freedom. 4 degrees of freedom gives us 4.604. Okay, so we found our answer to be 4.604, .604, so it'll be 4.604 and then negative 4.604. .604. So we have two critical values. Now we're going to compare our test stat to that, and obviously our test stat is much bigger than the critical value. Even though the critical value is pretty big, right, 4.6 is pretty far out there, but this number is by far further into the tail area. And because of that, we're going to clearly say that we reject the null hypothesis. So we'll say reject DHO and therefore support DHA. Looking at our claim, we can see our claim is the same as HA, so again, which happens often, we will support the claim here, or in other words, we will word our answer according to the alternative hypothesis, the sample data support the claim. So what does it mean to say we support the claim here? Well, it simply means that ultimately we're saying there is some linear relationship between the number of casino employees and the crime rate, and further, we can look at this slope here and you can see the slope is positive, so we could even assert that there's a positive linear relationship between these two variables. And let's remember what positive relationship means. It means as this increases, so does this. It means as this decreases, so does this. So what we're saying is the larger amount of casino employees you have working, which means obviously there's more gambling going on in the state because casinos don't hire employees when they don't need them, right? So there's more gambling, it, it translates usually to a higher crime rate. However, don't make the assumption of causation here, right? All we're showing is that more casino employees equals a higher crime rate, but that just could be because they compare together. There might be some other factor involving that, right? For example, poverty could be an issue. People who are poor may desire to go to the casino to kind of gamble away their worries or maybe to kind of hope to win it big or hit it big, or maybe because they're poor, you know, they come from classes of, of people who are, you know, maybe you know making worse decisions in life they're more likely to be gamblers and so they've you know put themselves in a situation where they're impoverished or they've lost their job so they're going to gamble you know all those things could be a factor which could also affect the crime rate right so we don't know what the cause is for this relationship we just know that the relationship exists now you may say well you know more gambling leads to higher crime because people get addicted to gambling and then that causes crime. That's a plausible explanation, but remember, you would still have to show that that relationship is caused by the simple act of having a higher amount of gambling in the state. You can't just make the assumption because we show that these two things appear together. We'll talk more about that as we get into the idea of regression and correlation, which will come up next.